So I get a lot of questions about mixing and mastering my own tracks. Uh, it's a pretty common comment actually that I get here on my channel. And the answer is yes, I have mixed and mastered probably almost every single track that I've ever gotten distributed into the TV film licensing business, with the exception of there might have been a few libraries I submitted tracks to and they did some sort of final tweakings with the edits and the mixing to submit it on to the distributors, okay? But in terms of did I ever hire a mastering engineer or a mixing engineer to you know, fix my mix essentially before I even sent it off to the library. No, I've never done anything like that, okay? And I was terrible at it in the beginning. The first couple of years of this business, my mixes were quiet. They didn't hit hard enough. There was no real range to them. I didn't have a lot of low end to them. My drums were really thin. My guitars were really thin. Um, you know, I just listen back to some of that stuff these days and it's just embarrassing how bad it really was. I think the musical ideas were pretty solid, but execution wise, no, I was getting a C, D minus. I mean, it was pretty, pretty, pretty bad. Now, I get emails uh, once in a while, not too often, but from mixing and mastering engineers who obviously don't like to hear me recommending to you guys to learn how to mix and master your own tracks. Because if you're not aware, it can take hundreds if not thousands of songs to be out there distributed and being shopped in the system for you to create full-time income. So that means you have to literally, let's even go at the low end of that, 100 tracks. How much does it cost to get a track mixed and mastered? Probably over $100, okay? So you do the math. If you're gonna start doing 100 tracks, and you probably should be doing, let's say, two tracks a week, 52 weeks in a year, so two times two, that's about 100 in a year. 100 times 100, are you doing, are you gonna have that kind of money laying around? Of course you don't, because you have just enough now probably to pay your bills, maybe put a little bit away for savings, maybe not even that. You might just be paycheck to paycheck. So it's just not even possible for you to start forking out, you know, 50 bucks, $100, $200 per track to get it mixed and mastered. That's simply just not possible. It's just not something that was, it wasn't a possibility for me. I was barely paying my bills in the beginning and probably for where you are now, you don't have that kind of money just laying around that you can pay for that, okay? And that's why, even though I was terrible at it in the beginning, I knew I have to, I had no other choice. I can't afford to just always be relying upon a mixer or a mastering engineer. I gotta learn how to do this for myself. I'll, con I'll continuously get better. I'll A-B test everything. I'll try new plugins. I'll look at new tutorials. I'll get reference tracks. I just knew that at some point I would start getting better and I just had to keep trying it. And that's, if there's any mistake about it, that is what I think all of you should be doing, okay? You should not be going and spending money on a mixing and mastering engineer and getting reliant on somebody else to make your track sound better. If you've got the money laying around and you don't care about throwing that money on that kind of a thing, great, go for it. You spend your money however you want. But most of you watching this right now don't have that money, okay? So what I don't like, and here's some of the things that I really push back on though, when the mixing and mastering engineers email me and say, Jesse, you know, like your stuff, but you know, you really shouldn't be telling people to mix and master their own uh, tracks. That really should be left for a professional. Of course, they don't like me taking business away from them, right? Because if I'm recommending that you guys do it yourselves, they don't get the gig anymore, okay? What I always tell them is I say, I understand, you know, you have a different perspective and that you, you, there is definitely a, a place and a purpose for professional mixing and mastering, but I explain why it's not really feasible in the sort of uh, method and a strategy that I'm sharing with you guys in terms of building up a large catalog, right? There's just so many tracks, you don't have the money to spend that on all that mixing and mastering. Um, but I, what I really don't like to hear is sometimes the, these engineers will email me and they'll say, you know, some producers just don't have what it takes. They're just not good at this. So why keep banging your head against the wall? They should just be paying people like us to make their tracks better. I really don't like that because that's sort of limiting people's abilities to believe in what they can do. You know what I'm saying? Because if you go back to me 10 years ago and said, you know, Jesse, are you a good at mixing and mastering engineer? I'd say no. Like maybe I thought I was good or something, but looking back now, no, I was definitely not good. But if I had believed back then, I'll just never get good at this. I'll just always have to rely on a mixing and mastering engineer and I'll just have to always fork out money. Well, guess what I wouldn't have been doing all these years? Trying, practicing, putting in new effort, getting new plugins, looking at new tutorials, comparing my mixes to the professionals out there, constantly having a battle between what I wanna get to and where I'm at now. Just always having that daily fight of just making small improvements. And now looking back on my career, the fact that I didn't spend a dime on mixing and mastering, I've saved so much money and I've, all those royalties now are expense free. I didn't have to pay any money to get those royalties. I spent, I spent a lot of time, absolutely. But now that I have those skills in my back pocket, I mix and master so quick, guys. It's like 
an hour at the most for an entire track. That's at the most. I'll spend an hour getting everything together. These days, because I've been doing this for so long, the track sounds pretty damn good by the time I get to that mixing and mastering part of my uh, session. And it's just a couple of tweaks. I already have some presets that I like. I dial in a couple of things, change a couple of EQ parameters, a little bit of compression, bounce, okay? It's a really fast process and it gets the job done. That's the last thing I wanna mention in this video is this sort of snobbery that goes on, on a little bit in the business where it's like, well, your track's not professionally mixed and mastered, right? And mastering engineers, of course, love throwing that in your face that you're not using a professional mastering engineer and you didn't go to a professional mastering studio. So you're not really a, pro a producer. You're not like a serious person or I don't know what the claim is. Here's what you gotta know. That might be true in the record industry. That might be true. Actually, it's not. But let's just say in other parts of the industry, that might be true, that you probably should be going to a professional mixing and mastering engineer, maybe because you have a budget from a label that can take care of that. For the rest of us, that doesn't happen. In the licensing business, how many times do you think I've gotten an email back from somebody saying, it's dope track, Jesse, we love this. The only problem is, only problem, man, we can tell this wasn't professionally mixed. And we, it certainly wasn't professionally mastered. We can tell that and therefore we have to reject the track. Sorry, next time just be more professional and go pay for those professional services. It's never happened guys, never once ever. <laughs> I always talk about the licensing business in terms of your tracks in a binary way, okay? It's only two responses that can get, come from your tracks when you send it to them. This is great, let's sign it or let's place it. And not really what we're looking for, not really well produced, uh, mix is kind of sloppy, we don't really like it, whatever it is, right? Yes or no, that's all it is. It's not yes on everything, but uh, where did you have this professionally mastered and mixed? We gotta, gotta, we gotta figure that out first before we decide if we wanna throw some money behind. Nobody cares about that guy, so don't fall for this snobbery that's out there. These are obviously just music professionals that are trying to get clients, right? They obviously want you to pay them to mix and master your music. Unfortunately, because of technology and because of the way just the licensing business works, they're not really as essential as they might have been in decades past. And that's really frustrating. I totally understand. If I were a mixing and mastering engineer and that was my full-time income, I don't know. I would be a little bit pissed and a little bit not really too happy that a lot of producers are just doing it themselves. But again, I started this channel and I'm educating producers like you, okay? You make music from home. You're on a limited budget. You're on a shoestring budget and you're just working from your home DAW, right? You don't have the money to be throwing on those kind of services. And I hope today you have the confidence to know you don't have to, okay? It takes time. It's, you're not gonna get better at it overnight. If your mixes are terrible right now and you're just honest about that, be patient with yourself, go easy on yourself, but keep working at it. Keep chipping away at it every single day. Get feedback if you can get feedback. Watch tutorials, try new plugins, bounce 17 different versions of a song, compare it to a reference track and decide which one of those 17 was the best and maybe that's like your new standard of where you're gonna start going with your, your plugins and your mixing and your mastering techniques. And then once you find that sort of baseline, now do another 17 and try to find even something better than that first one. That's how you're gonna improve, guys. How do you think a mixing and mastering engineer improved? Do you think they were just gifted with that ability? No, they spent hours, thousands of hours in a studio listening to music, trying things out, clicking on buttons, trying new settings out until they got their system that really worked for them. And now they're a machine and they can crank out stuff super fast. Why can't you be in a machine? Why can't you be that machine as well, right? Save all that money. It will take some time. You are gonna be paying for it in terms of your time. In the long run though, that time will get shorter and shorter and shorter and you'll save all of